Welcome to Ruby on Rails. Uh, this is the web development framework that we'll be using. So this is the website for Ruby on Rails here. You can see it's a pretty sophisticated web framework. It's used by large companies like Twitter, GitHub, Shopify, and Basecamp, along with many, many other organizations. This is a very sophisticated web framework, and we're only going to be able to touch on the basic ideas of how it works, how it is organized, and how you would begin to develop a web uh, site with it. But uh, with that in mind, after you're done, we hope that you will be able then to fully develop web sites with other frameworks like Rails as, as well as more deeply utilize what you learn in Rails. I'm just going to show you a few resources that you might want to utilize in your process of learning Rails. First and, and foremost, that being the Rails website itself where it has a lot of good documentation, especially these Rails guides where they show how to get started, what active record is, how to do migrations, and so on and so forth. There are a lot of very good web pages here that are available as well as pointers to other uh, books and crazy cartoons. And then there is the Railscast uh, screencast which does very similar things and was maybe an inspiration to what I'm doing in this class except it's, they go into very deep details. You can see some of the categories that these do and how long it's been around from all the way from Rails 2.0 through Rails 4.0 and covers a whole host of different topics from testing to um, e-commerce, how to do authentication and authorization, doing Ajax and, and so on and, and so forth. And these are very good. The one downside to Railscast, you can see the last episode here was in June 16, 2013. It seems to go, have gone on hi hiatus longer than initially planned and so I don't know if these will be coming back. Fortunately they stand the test of time pretty well and uh, they are at least a good resource if even if you um, they'll point you in the idea of an answer rather than giving you the exact answer that you want. Finally the resource I'm going to point you at is the Ruby on Rails tutorial by Michael Hartle and he has a very nice tutorial that we have gone through in, in the past in this class. Uh, the reason why I'm not explicitly going through it is because I found that students uh, told me that when they got something, let, let me just click on something uh, a little bit further down here that looked uh, something like this and it had this kind of code right here or um, you had to type in this or type in that, that they would just cut and paste it, put it in the right spot. And even though they knew that they shouldn't, because of the time pressures and the ease of doing it, that's exactly what they did. And they didn't really feel like they understood what they were doing, be naturally, because they were cutting and pasting and weren't understanding what that is. And so I am not going to go through this tutorial step by step or expect you to go through it step by step. But of course there is going to naturally be a commonality between what I'm going through and what Michael is going through in this tutorial because you have to learn the same types of thing and there's a certain order in which it's natural to learn them and to use them and so you might want to look along with this if something doesn't make sense in the video uh, that the tutorial makes more sense or gives a different uh, slant on it. And so this is just one more resource that you can use uh, at your disposal as, as well as many other resources that you I'm sure you can find on Google and, and Stack Overflow. But I'm very excited about the, the Rails framework. It is very useful and powerful and is designed to make you a web developer more productive because it knows what you're commonly going to do and provides those common 
actions and needs automatically so you can focus on what's specific to your application that's different from every other web application in the world and not have to focus on the things that every web application has to do because Rails knows you need to do it and automatically does those types of things for you or, or sets them up to, to do quite naturally. And so for the rest of the course we're going to look into how Rails works and then uh, utilize that with our example project and I will as often as possible mention how there are parallels to Rails with other frameworks so that you see that this isn't just a Rails course but it's a web development course using Rails as our <coughs> platform that we're using to understand and better get uh, into those kinds of ideas and that will hopefully then translate to whatever web framework you use, whether it's a Django using Python or some PHP framework like Cake or, or, or whatever uh, other infrastructure you use.